it's a gimmick and wins from beginning to end. No gimmick if I rip it, dude, I live at the end. And you can't do it, so ain't no need for mimicking. I'm not innocent, I'm on a mission, so let me finish it. Matter of time before they summon the army in. I'm probably on the FBI's most wanted list. I'm probably gonna end up hung like an ornament. I'm on a life mission to a bunch of terrorists. What's up, what's up? How you guys doing? Welcome back to the uh, Liberty Hour. This is our uh, third show. Uh, the first two were very successful. Uh, I wanted to thank Ricky and Al for being on the first two shows. It was uh, very good. Had a nice long conversation with them. Uh, got another great guest tonight. Um, before I introduce him, let me do what I do every week and go over some uh, NBA scores for the day. So the Cavaliers beat the Magic 104-103, edged out at the end. Uh, 76ers beat the Celtics 89 to 80. Um, right now we have got the Timberwolves and Rockets game that is going on, and it is at a halftime with the Rockets leading 63 to 50. Trailblazers and Pacers just kicked off. It's 24 23 Blazers in the first quarter. And uh, with all that said, let me go ahead and introduce my uh, guest for the week. So I've got uh, Brandon Thompson. He is uh, he was on the golf team when I was at uh, Lincoln High. He graduated uh, 2014, two years before I did, and uh, he's really cool. I, I, great guy, man. We uh, we got to talk a lot during on my freshman year on the golf team. He actually graduated 2013. I just realized that Matt graduated 2014. Um, but I just wanted to introduce him here. And uh, yeah, Brandon, how's it going? Aaron Jackson, what is up, my man? How are you? I'm I'm doing great, man. Everything's awesome. going good. And uh, how you been, man? What you been up to? I've been really good. I just work at the golf course, Turkey Creek, still trying to do the golf thing and uh, just living life. What about you? How golf going with you? Yeah, golf's going good. I mean, uh, I actually went out and played today. I uh, have been trying to play a lot more par three courses lately. I went and played Antelope Greens uh, last week, shot three over. And today I went out yeah. and played Indian Creek and Loomis. And let me tell you one thing. If you are playing golf, the worst – I don't care if you're playing in rain. I don't care if you're playing in wind. The worst time to play golf is if the course is muddy. Like, I hate that. Dude, exactly. I I played today, and that course was so muddy. It's always muddy there from what I remember playing. It's been like three years since I've been out there. But – I mean, I shot 38, but it's a par 32, and it was just not good. I mean, (laughs) because the thing is when you're – when you are chipping the ball, like you have to pick it so cleanly, like you can't get on top of it because you're gonna like risk it blading it. If you get too far under it, you're gonna chunk that thing, and it's gonna be short of the green. You have to pick it perfectly on days where the grass is muddy. And the worst thing I think every time is if you hit a shot and it lands in some muddy ground, it goes two inches deep in the ground. If and it's the hard to find. Hard, it doesn't bounce, so you're looking for your ball, and it's two inches in the ground. It's a lost ball. I mean, right. You know, fifty fifty percent of the time. Which is why I'm so glad. Well, not that obviously it's going to be hard to find the ball, but um, exactly. I'm so glad at this time of the year we play lift clean in place. If you had to play it down all the time, oh my god, it just oh man, it would be bad. It's bad. <laughs> the, score, the scores are high after that. No exactly. <laughs> it's like you hit a good shot or a good drive, and it's just like you're done. Like it's like the ball will just plug in the ground, or like you don't get any roll or anything like that. It's just like crazy too. And also exactly. When, like, Greens are in bad condition. It's hard to like putt on those greens like today. Those greens out there. I mean, it's a par three course. You're gonna expect it's not in the best conditions, but yeah. I mean, at the same time, it's like you gotta keep it up somewhat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but no, I, it's I been going good. I mean, I played uh, Wood Creek and Diamond over break. I also played uh, the Ridge, and so mm-hmm. yeah, I'm glad I've got out and played golf again because I haven't played before this winter break. I didn't play for like two or three months. So, I mean, I'm glad yeah. I got went out and played a few times and uh, hopefully I can keep that up at least a little bit, which is good to you. But how, uh, how have you been golfing? Yeah. What's been up, man? Like, uh, you do any tournaments recently or anything like that? You know, 
I haven't been doing many tournaments. I've just been working, and it's tough to get in a full round of golf while working. You know, you, I work in the pro shop, so it's usually from about 11 to, you know, 5 at night. I mean, there goes your whole day. You know, it's busy right. at the golf course in the morning, so it's hard to get out there. I usually try, you know, if I can get out, play at least three holes or, you know, hit the rain. I mean, yep. work on the putting green. You know, that's where you make the money is that putting and chipping. Right, exactly. So, and I go up to Lincoln Hills a lot because I love their practice facility. I mean, the, the putting and chipping is all there, and yeah, it's just good to go. But yeah, I've definitely one of my favorite practicing. facilities. Yeah, so no tournaments, but practicing, practicing, practicing as much as that's possible. That's great, man. So. Yeah, um, I was actually going to ask you. Um, I work at Top Golf, as you know, and uh, there mm-hmm. at uh, – we have it pretty much the busiest days on Friday and Saturday, but over winter break, it's pretty much busy any day. How, Mm -hmm. um, in terms of business, like at the golf course, how does it work? Like when is it the busiest, like, and what days are the busiest? Like, just talk about that for a little bit for me. So the weekends are obviously, you know, people have it off. Um, the, the prices are higher, but it's still, everyone has it off. So they will definitely be out there Friday through Sunday, probably nine times out of 10. It's probably the busiest days we got. Um, but you'll be surprised. You go out there on a, on a Tuesday, you know, and there'll be no tournaments or anything. It'll just be stacked from seven in the morning to two in the afternoon. And you'll be like, what is going, it's a Tuesday. Like what is going on here? Um, well, I've noticed like, it's weird. Tuesday is like the one day during the week where like, for some reason people go out. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't either. I mean, some people, you know, people have Tuesdays off as well. So it's just a hit and miss, honestly, with the golf course business. It really is. Um, but you know, if it's raining or if it's even a little bit drizzly, dude, it's, there's no one out there. So, yeah, you know, those are probably the days when it's just drizzling. Nice little drizzle is probably the perfect day to come out because you can get a tea time whenever you want, you know? Right. So, but other than that, it's yeah, that people Friday are afraid through to play Sunday. in a little rain, I know. <laughs> one, even if they hear it on the, on the news, you know, oh, it's supposed to rain today. Nope. I don't even yeah, care like if it doesn't today rain. They They're, said it was nope. going to rain like all day and it barely rained. I bet you they probably called off someone at the golf course because they just, you know, it's just, nope, we're not even going to try it. I don't even want to pay or book a tee time, you know. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. that's how they do it. Well, yeah, um, thanks for talking to me about that there. But um, the first yeah, thing I want to get into into here, uh, this weekend we got a, obviously a couple of big football games. I'm uh, excited. AFC I'm Championship, pumped. NFC champi- Championship Sunday. Um, yes. AFC, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be playing at New England, facing the Patriots. Mm-hmm. And then we one. have the Vikings yeah. after that. Oh, my God, the Minnesota Miracle. That was insane, man. What against, an unbelievable game. Against the Saints. I can't believe that. I mean, Williams, literally all he had to do was just stand there. And he's going to get the guy because uh, Diggs is going to go into him. And then like, it's it was, game over. And then yeah, the, exactly. the clock runs out. He doesn't get out of bounds. Game over. Right. Well, I mean, the worst thing that happens is like he spins and he goes out of bounds, but it's still a long field goal for for Bath. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know it's crazy. I but, feel um, terrible for that cornerback. I, that oh, Williams, me too, man. I, I mean, that's yeah. gut wrenching. That's his rookie season. That's not yeah. how you want to go out. Yeah. Ah, it's just tough to watch. But I mean, great yeah. for the Minnesota Vikings. All you know. Exactly. I mean, my two picks going into the season for the Super Bowl were going to be Atlanta and. Uh, Pittsburgh, and they both mm. went out over the weekend. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I was thinking Pittsburgh would have would have made it past the Jags. But yeah, there's know. actually a really funny uh, Twitter post by the Jacksonville uh, Twitter page, and mm. uh, basically I forget which Steeler player it was, but he was saying like about the Patriots if they play them in the AFC Championship, he was mm. saying we'll play them in Haiti, we'll play them here, and uh, Jacksonville retweeted it and they said uh, you can play them all you want on at EA Madden. <laughs> NFL. <laughs> called him out in the off season. That was great. That is hilarious. That's oh awesome. yeah, it's great. But uh, so yeah, the second game is Minnesota at Philly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and go through our predictions for him for you guys. Uh, the AFC Championship is gonna be the first game on of the day at twelve oh five. Um, the point spread for that is a uh, New England by seven and a half. No surprise there. I mean, I think a mm-hmm. lot of people are picking New England for that game, but. Uh, well, we'll go through our predictions for that in a sec. For the yeah. um, Philly Minnesota game, Minnesota's actually predicted to win. Uh, they have a three point spread on that, even though it's at Philly. Um, mm. So I just want to go ahead and go through it with you. So we'll go AFC Championship first. Um, yeah, per- Jacksonville at New England. What are you thinking? Uh, that's funny that you say those spreads. I didn't even look at the spreads. I just went with what my gut said and. You know, I I really hate to say it, but I, I don't want to see the Patriots in the Super Bowl again. 
just because they're always there. Uh, yeah, I forget. What's your favorite team again? I, I am a Cowboys fan. That's right. And, yeah, uh, that's right. you know, we're not going to talk about it right now. I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> I'm a Niner fan. We won't talk about that right yeah, now. Yeah, okay. We'll just be done with that. Uh, yeah. No, but, um, uh, you know, the Jags, tremendous defense. I think they don't go into Foxborough and beat the Patriots. And I got them Patriots winning 28-21. And it's funny okay. that you say the spread because that's what I got is that seven point spread, you know, <laughs> even with uh, the, the defense. And uh, one interesting fact I do have about the Jaguars is Tom Coughlin isn't just the executive VP for the Jaguars. He's like almost an extension to the coaching in a way. And he has beat the Patriots not once, but twice in the Super Bowl. Yeah. So it's just an interesting fact that that people should have in mind as as this game happens. Both of those uh, were uh, from it, completely insane catches. <laughs> they were. One, they were. One by a great win. catch by Mario Manningham, and then the other one by uh, Ty. What's his name again? Ty, oh, oh, it starts I, with a T. I know it's like Ty isn't something. It Tyrese something. Tyrese Ty, something. Oh my god! I'm gonna have to I, look that. I know. Up. I'm blank. But, but I mean, yeah, that's I mean, bad. I want to try catches. to look that up. 2007 uh, Super Bowl. Yeah, that's incredible kill catches. Me. But... <laughs> I know. I'm going to have to look that up. And then what are you thinking about for the uh, Minnesota-Philly game? Oh, that, man. It's the battle of the defenses. Defenses win championships, let me tell you. Um, I got Vikings winning 21-17. Um, okay. That's tough, though, because they go to Philadelphia, and it is cold. Vikings are used to playing in that dome. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. That's, that's, that's going to be a tough one. That'll be an amazing game to watch, I, I really think. I, I agree. Um, David Tyree is the name. That's David we Tyree. There it is. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I know there's a T in there somewhere. The helmet um, catch. Oh, I know. That was crazy. <laughs> so was you good. got um, 28-21 New England, New and England, then yep. it was uh, 21-17 Vikings. 21-17 Vikings. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I agree with you. The Vikings, I think, will beat the Eagles. I think people really, like I said last week, really underestimate what Nick Foles can do. Um, mm-hmm. At the same time, he he's not Carson Wentz, obviously. Um, yeah. That defense has been helping out them out a lot. Defense I don't think it's going to go much further, though. Honestly, Minnesota... I don't want to say that, like, because I don't believe in like necessarily like destiny and like destined and stuff like that. But if yeah. any team was ever destined to win, it is Minnesota after what happened last week. Period. In, in, like, the, in their home stadium, they're going to go. Oh to the yeah, Super Bowl that's what's crazy. In Minnesota, yeah, first time ever, so, man, first time ever. I agree with you. I've got a twenty-seven twenty Minnesota in that game. Nice. Um, I think Philly can put up twenty, but mm-hmm. Minnesota. I, I I don't understand how Keith Keenum is playing so good, but He's they're just doing rolling. it. Man, I mean, he's just, rolling. Just, he's when, got a great they, squad. Yeah, when they get to that point, uh, teams just start rolling. And same thing going with Nick Foles. You know, Carson Wentz, he goes out. That's just – you don't see that happen. It's like the Raiders last year with uh, De- uh, Derek Carr. You know, you don't yeah. see it coming. And here comes Nick Foles, who had, like, the highest pass rating in the league when he was right. with um, Kip Kelly. I mean, yeah. he's a great quarterback, so you can't count him out. But I just think that defense is it, – it's rolling. That team's right. just rolling on its way to the uh, to the Super Bowl, I think. So. Well, and you were just mentioned about Carr and the Raiders. Let me tell mm-hmm. you one thing they were going to regret. Um, Marshawn Lynch is a great running back. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But they got rid of Latavius Murray. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Just they are regretting that, period. Like, that's they are a, regretting that. That's a big that. loss. And Latavius Murray knew it, and now he's proven himself in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. He really is. He's going off. So Yeah, and let me tell you, Thielen is just phenomenal. Did you see that catch he made last week when Thielen just threw it up? Oh, yeah. Oh, Thielen. Oh, my God. I have this thing where uh, people say, it's more than a Thielen. I love that. (laughs) I love that. That is awesome, dude. And it is. That's what it is. He's just, you throw it up. We need to play that at the games. (laughs) It's just more than a Thielen. He's going to catch that ball. You know what I mean? It's just, he's he's unbelievable. Oh, I know. It's crazy. He was on my fantasy team. And uh, I'm telling you, he's really proven himself this year for sure. I'm going to go through my uh, Patriot Jaguar score with you guys. Um, one thing I didn't let you know, Brandon, before the show is since I'm on Spreaker, I can only do 15 minutes at a time. So I'm just going to end this real quick, start up part two for you guys. So I will go through my New England Jacksonville prediction in one sec with you guys. We will be right back. So stay tuned. <laughs> 